I'm glad I waited to buy a house. Said absolutely no one over the last few years. We're going to talk a little bit about that and what's happening in the current market. Um, my name is Austin Bateman, and this is... I'm Mitch Petrick, uh, here with Real Estate One. And we're realtors in Southeast Michigan, and like I said, we're going to talk about what's happening in the market today. So, Mitch, it's January 2023. Um, we're a month in and a lot has changed from 2022. So can you tell us generally what happened in the real estate market over the last year, 2022? Yeah, over the last year, we had uh, quite the, the crazy year. And uh, it's tough to say when you look at uh, the, the COVID years that we're getting out of, but we're really entering a normal real estate market. And uh, everyone's trying to figure out exactly what that means. Um, the start of the year, we saw one of the sharpest increases in average sale price, uh, but we've also seen one of the sharpest decreases uh, in the second six months of the year. Um, a stat that uh, it's been really troubling me um, is that uh, over the last three years, you know, we we normally see this depreciation in home values after the the summer months because of the seasonality of our markets. Um, so typically in your average year after prices peak, uh, they fall off about seven, seven and a half percent um, from Jan or June to January. Um, but this year we're looking at about 14.9 percent from uh, June to January. So that's about double what we see in a normal market. So it's, it's, it's caused people a little bit of uh, alarm. And uh, I think that's a, a bit what we're talking about today. And is it just, you know, the seasonality, it being January, or is it uh, something more to be worried about? Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, the seasonality of real estate, which we haven't really had over the last few years, um, there's always a drop off in the winter months and the colder months. But you're saying it's double what it normally is. Um, so, you know, is that... Are we just coming back to seasonality with bigger swings because of the crazy highs that we've experienced? Is it, are we dropping, our average sale price is dropping so much because we were up so high? You know, what's really happening? Uh, I think there's a few things that go along with that. Not just the fact that we're in a market where we are seeing more seasonality, but also because of something you said, Mitch, which was the mix of business. You know. What are some of the things that might be pushing those average sale prices down? Yeah, so you know the mix of business is something that we see every year in our real estate markets. Um, it's you know when you say it out loud, it sounds pretty obvious, but the best homes sell in the spring and summer months, and then uh, the worst homes tend to sit and wait. You got some of those uh, stubborn sellers who are unwilling to do a, a price reduction or, or make a marketing adjustment. Um, but we're uh, you know, seeing some of those more tired listings in the winter months and buyers start to you know, toss out some of those crazy offers that they hope will get accepted by a, a seller who's had their house on market for a couple months now and they just want to get it off their hands. So um, this happens to drag down all the numbers in the market uh, in the winter months. Um, you know, more people are looking to buy in the spring and the summer. So yeah, it's, yeah. you know, a lot of obvious reasons, whether it be weather as we, you know, sit here in January on a, a snowy uh, snowstorm day, a lot of yeah. school closings. Uh, I personally have moved in February and uh, we got a, an ice storm uh, on our moving day. So, um, you know, they're, they're the, the real obvious reasons, but, you know, they're some less obvious. You know, if, if you're a person with a family, uh, you have kids in school, you don't want to interrupt uh, their uh, school schedules. Yeah. So a lot of families will postpone the move until spring when uh, it makes more sense for them and the, the move can be a little bit easier. So uh, we definitely will see more listings come to market uh, as the weather warms up a bit. Yeah. And, and like you said, there were a lot of unrealistic sellers that weren't willing to re readjust when the market started coming back down from their historic highs. I mean, the market's never been as high as it ever was in, the, in 2021 and early 22. So, um, you know, even though prices are coming down from that, year over year, Mitch, we're still up, correct? Yeah, year over year, uh, prices have still been rising. And uh, it's easy to, you know, 
look at an average for the entire year, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, trying to look into some of those more seasonal trends and see if there's uh, something more to those numbers, uh, which I think, yes, we have seen a, a sharper cutoff, um, but what we're really looking for is a, a bounce here in the spring. Mm -hmm. And what's going to cause that is uh, supply and demand. It, it's always at the root of what drives our values, what drives prices. Um, it's the number of buyers and sellers in the market. And we do believe that there have been an equal number of, of buyers and sellers who have exited the market, but there's also um, those people who are coming back in uh, getting those pre-approvals. Um, mm -hmm. Month supply of inventory is a, a very popular metric that we use. It calculates the number of months it takes to absorb all the inventory in, in our market. So let's say uh, month supply of inventory is uh, two and a half months right now. That means if we were to sell every house on the market, it would take two and a half months before we were dry of all the homes. So uh, right now we're still sitting around two months and they say anywhere below six months is reason for prices to appreciate. Um, we have been below this number and that uh, is you know, an average. So depending on where your price range is, uh, impacts that a little bit more. Some of the, the more luxury markets uh, do have a, a higher uh, month supply of inventory, but at that entry level price range and some of those uh, really desirable areas, we're still sitting at only a month, month and a half. So yeah. uh, demand is still moving despite market times rising. We, we see market times rise just about every winter with uh, the seasonality. Yeah. And like you said, it's it's simple supply and demand. So there are, even if we you know, get rid of all those houses that are on the market in two and a half months, there's still new listings coming up. Not as many as you know, I'm sure a lot of buyers would like, but there's still listings coming up and there's still a ton of buyers left over. And what we've seen, um, there was an article that came out um, on Yahoo Finance, you know, is there really gonna be a real estate bottom, which you're talking about that bounce in the mm -hmm. spring, when prices, you know, as they keep declining, when do they start coming back up? And the prediction is, you know, that's, that's going to be happening soon based on what we're seeing in the market. Just at the beginning of this year, um, you know, I, I got a, I'd already closed on a house in Royal Oak and we had to come in and we had to compete against another buyer, which is not as crazy as it was in 21 or 22, but we still had to compete. We wrote a little bit over, but then after the fact, after we got the offer accepted, we were able to negotiate some seller concessions. And that buyer actually got a really fair deal for a great house in Royal Oak. I also put up another, uh, it's a condo in Royal Oak, and in four days on the market, we had close to 30 showings and four offers all over asking. And we're in contract for far above the asking price now. It'll be a record comp for that building. So there's still activity in the market. Um, and I think that a lot of people are coming back because those interest rates started to come down a little bit. Um, we're talking from six and three quarters to low six percent. So interest rates are still not 2.8 and three percent like they were two years ago, but they're at a they're starting to stabilize, and I think that's one of those things that's going to drive um, that bounce back that you're talking about. Yeah, a lot of times it really depends on what somebody's monthly payment is going to be for their house mm -hmm. and. There are a couple of factors that uh, go into that, one being your interest rate and two being your purchase price. These are two of the biggest factors in your, um, your, your cost to borrow uh, and your ability to afford that house. And we have seen the cost to borrow rise in the last year. Um, if I can just quickly uh, toss out some uh, historic mortgage rates um, over the past five years, yeah. Um, you know, currently we're sitting at about 6.15%. Uh, a year ago, we were only at 3.31%. So in one year, we've nearly doubled in mortgage rates. Again, uh, a year further back, we were even better at 2.78%. You go back to, to 2020, right before the pandemic started, 3.76%. And then uh, 2019, 4.64%. Uh, so these are all, you know, really, really good mortgage rates when we talk about it historically. If you, uh, 
Talk to someone who got a rate back in the 80s, they'll uh, tell you that these are children's numbers. <laughs> so um, we're, we're really still doing pretty well as far as the cost to borrow. Now, still, home prices have been rising year over year, and we, we haven't seen that price correction yet. So that's really what a lot of people are hoping for is a, a price correction. Um, and I, I said correction, not crash. So yeah. uh, I, I don't know many people who are, are banking on a real estate crash. Um, but if you are, uh, let me know how that's going for you. It's because we keep <laughs> talking about uh, every year you've waited to, to buy a house, the, the cost to own has gone up, whether it's your rate, your insurance, your taxes, there are a number of different things that have risen and it's all about uh, inflation and, and yeah. the, the money out of your pocket. Absolutely. You know, and as a real life example, I've been in real estate for, or I've been in real estate since 2015. So every single one of my buyers uh, over the last eight, almost nine years now, um, <laughs> not a single one of them has reported to me that they regret their purchase. Not a single person regrets um, buying when they did because every year after that values have gone up especially people who bought in 2019 and 2020 uh, especially 2021 even though they are paying these high prices they thought well how much higher can it go and unless you bought a house in 2021 um, you know in the summer of 2021 then really your values are up uh, and your interest rates are also up so no one regrets buying when they did, at least from my experience. Um, and Mitch, I think that you're going to go over the actual cost difference, you mm -hmm. know, the monthly payments, the price differences, and the interest rates over the last few years. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and use our Palm Agent app that's provided by our title company, uh, Capital Title. Um, it's an excellent app for uh, being able to Estimate uh, what your monthly mortgage payment might be right there on the spot. Let's say you know you're in the showing and you're like, hey, I want to write an offer, uh, but I'm gonna have to write an offer, you know, thirty thousand over list price. What's that actually gonna cost me? How much am I gonna have to to bring in? Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and, and stick in some historic numbers and show how that has uh, increased your cost to borrow. So if we go back to 2019 and uh, as I mentioned before, we had mortgage rates at about 4.64%. And if you were to get a 30-year mortgage, putting down 10%, we'll say it's about average. Um, the average sale price for 2019 was around $205,000. Uh, with all other um, factors of the same, we're going to go ahead and compute what your monthly payment would be. And for the average home to purchase with the average rate that you were able to secure, your monthly payment would be $14.60, um, which sounds pretty good. Uh, if you're going to be a little surprised when uh, these numbers get up to the 2022-2023 numbers yeah. of what your monthly payment would be. So that's, that's really something that's the top of a uh, buyer's mind is, is my monthly payment, how much is coming out of my, my wallet each month. Um, so for 2020, uh, the average sale price risen to 3.76, but you were able to secure a lower mortgage rate with all other factors the same. Your mortgage rate, even though prices went up, is almost the same at 14.32. So um, that's a, a, you know, your mortgage rate goes down, your cost to borrow goes down. Uh, we go into 2021. Uh, we're trending the different way with prices and the different way with rates. So let's see how that affects your monthly <laughs> mortgage payment. So in 2021, the average sale price was three or er, 237,000, uh, but you were able to secure a 2.78% mortgage rate. Which, if you tell anyone that you have that, they should instantly get jealous of. Uh, your ability to borrow money. <laughs> so again, uh, the price of homes went up nearly $20,000, but since rates went down, uh, your rate, uh, your monthly mortgage payment is going to be about the same, fourteen six three. Yeah. So what's happening is these interest rates get lower, your affordability is going up, and that's actually helping you as the as home values increase. So the same house that you could have bought for two hundred five is now over two hundred thirty thousand. So 
you're, even though those houses are getting more expensive, you can still afford those houses at about the same monthly mortgage. Yeah, and I, I did not mention that your you know down payment that you would bring uh, does increase for uh, these percentages, um, but not by much. It's it's really about that monthly payment for most buyers. Mm -hmm. um, so for 2022, again, uh, this will be one of the larger jumps in average sales price. We went from 237 in 2021 to 267 in 2022. <laughs> That's a thirty thousand dollar price jump. Uh, I made the joke earlier about uh, your buyer wanting to write thirty thousand above list price. In twenty twenty one, we could say that was about the standard if you wanted yeah, to buy a house. It wasn't a joke. That was real life. Um, and your rate going up to three point three one percent. Your monthly mortgage payment also jumped three hundred dollars a month. So that went up to uh, seventeen seventeen. Mm -hmm. um, again, the the cost to borrow rising each 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 passing year, um, and if you go up to our current time of uh, 2023, starting off the year, we're sitting around about 284 thousand. All those other factors staying the same. Uh, I mentioned your interest rate has now doubled to 6.15 percent. Uh, Austin, what do you think that's going to do to the, the payment? So uh, we we only went up thirty thousand or uh, three hundred dollars on your monthly payment. Uh, think about another three hundred or even more. To your, to I'll your tell rate. you what people hope's going to happen, but math is going to make it uh, the opposite. I know people think that the longer they wait, values will go down and their payments will be lower. But Mitch, we both know that that payment's going to be way higher. Mm -hmm. So I go ahead and hit compute. And uh, just about right on, you're at 2,263 uh, for buying the, the average property in the market. So um, I'm not talking about you know the, the luxury or, or, or the bargain uh, bottom hunting. We're talking about your average property, your average mortgage rate in Southeast Michigan. So uh, the, the cost to borrow rising along with the cost of the actual homes themselves um, going hand in hand. Um, you know, in, in 2021, we had a drop down in mortgage rates with the rise in prices. So your your rate actually didn't move in a year, but uh, with your rate moving and prices moving, uh, you see that double jump and uh, double jeopardy on, on yeah. the buyer's cost to borrow. Uh, and that's really deterring some people from uh, buying, but we're really seeing uh, starting the year of mortgage applications uh, pick up. Have, yeah. have you seen any of that? Absolutely. Um, you know, like I said, we had to compete against another buyer. Um, when I was at my buyer early January, and we had you know four offers in four days. So yeah, people are back in the market. Um, I've had more people reach out to me saying, "Hey, I just got pre-approved. Let's go start looking at houses." Um, and most of these buyers, let's go back to the mix of business just for a second, Mitch. Most of my clients are first-time home buyers. Maybe they're single, they're newly married, or they have one kid. Um, but most of these, you know, they're not tied down to the seasonality. They don't have to buy in the spring or the summer. Mm -hmm. So they're actually getting a benefit by starting to look in these winter months and locking in houses because they're not tied down by any of that mix of business. And that is a big piece for the first-time buyer pool. I want to actually talk about a, an article from Insider. First time home buyers are, in quotes, royally screwed. <laughs> uh, this you love, you love these news uh, <laughs> headlines that uh, yeah. royally screw us. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the headlines are very misleading. Um, this whole article, uh, it's a quote from this one buyer they followed. In 2019, this buyer uh, tried to buy their house, uh, it was their first home. It was $315,000, and they didn't like what came up on the inspection report. So they ended up backing out of the deal, and they were just going to wait to see what happened with the market and wait to find another deal because there's always one more deal that will come up. And the whole article, it talks about all the you know differences in, in, in um, buyer makeup and all that. But at the end of the article, um, he says that you know he, he feels royally screwed and that uh, the market's just going to keep doing this to people. But in the end, he did buy a house. 
it was $130,000 more <laughs> than what he could have bought it for in 2019 with the lower interest rates. So if you wait, you know, for something to change or for something to happen, um, you know, we're just going to keep seeing these big swings in the market. Uh, I think that if buyers just get used to these stabilized 6% interest rates, right, hoping that maybe it goes down or it might go up. But if you buy a house when you are ready to buy a house um, and, you're, and you're capable of doing so and making the payments and it makes sense for your lifestyle, then stop waiting around for something to change. Just buy the house, mm -hmm. right? This, this guy feels like he was gypped and that it's, nothing's going to get any better, but his house is worth more than when he paid for it, even though it was $130,000 more than the first time around. So, yes, he paid more for the house, but his house is still worth more than it was when he bought it. He got to ride that wave of appreciation. So if you've yeah. been sitting on the, the sideline and uh, we haven't even talked about renters, uh, renters are the ones getting hit even harder than, mm -hmm. than homeowners. Um, during times of heavy inflation, uh, one of the key things that you can control is your housing costs. It's your, your largest monthly payment for, for most folks. And... Uh, the cost to rent homes has risen uh, just as dramatically as the cost uh, to purchase. Yeah. So if, if you've been you know, sitting out uh, renting each year, you've probably noticed that your rent for your apartment or your home has, has gone up while you know, you're dealing with uh, the landlord, not fixing stuff and, um, and making demands that you... Uh, uh, repair things yourself, um, the home that you don't own. Um, it's, it's definitely uh, hitting renters just as hard as it is uh, prospective home buyers. Yeah, and I actually did a poll on Instagram as well as looking up um, a while ago. I think that rent rates are actually going to go up mm -hmm. uh, even more because rent prices always lag sale prices, and there was still year over year purchase price growth. So I think that rents are going to continue to go up. Um, it was 57% said that they agree rents are going to go up. 43% of people said that rents were going to either go down or stay the same. Most yeah, of the I, people... I'd say that's wishful thinking on that 43%. <laughs> uh, they're hoping that yeah. rent goes down, but uh, they probably don't have any facts and figures to uh, back that up. Um, right. But uh, as far as inflation numbers that I've been seeing, uh, there's no sign or indication that housing costs is looking to go down. So yeah. housing costs could be the, the ability to purchase or just to rent a home. Yeah, it's both. Um, so, and, and there's nothing wrong with renting in mm -hmm. any situation, you know, uh, people have different things going on. And if you haven't yet decided where you're going to live, then why would you buy in that area knowing that you're just gonna move anyway? Uh, there's a lot of people that plan to move out of state, which is happening a lot, um, but, I think a lot of those those swings in the market, both renting and purchase, I, I think that it's going to keep having, I think because people are reacting and not responding to what's happening, I think we're going to keep seeing these swings. Mm -hmm. And if you, I mean, Mitch does all the housing reports for our company. He's the stats guy, so he's here to make sure I am not misinterpreting anything. <laughs> but when you see these year-over-year -year graphs, these lines make these big upswings and big downswings, but if you zoom in on those stats, there's lots of up and downs that go with those. There's never a straight line up sideways or down. And I think these swings that we're feeling right now are one, seasonality, but also two, people overreacting to all these big headlines in the, in the news. Yeah, and you know, typically real estate markets, uh, the way they move is, is quite boring compared to, let's say, uh, an exciting stock yeah. um, with you know, daily movement. Uh, real estate moves pretty slow. It's, it's, it's large purchases, and uh, we're, we're seeing that the decline in the second half of the year, as I mentioned before, was sharper than we've, we've seen in years past, um, but we do expect that it will bounce back. Um, I, I think uh, I, I mentioned uh, how that decline at the second half of the year, a stat that we're seeing is an uptick in mortgage applications uh, here to start the year. Now, mortgage applications don't necessarily mean uh, a home purchase, but if we look at indicators that uh, are early indicators ahead of the actual closed sale, 
uh, mortgage applications are, are the first step in a home buyer's uh, perspective uh, process. Uh, you know, you go from uh, the application to the actual approved mortgage to the accepted offer to the closing. Um, so we have uh, you know, showings and uh, pendings to look at before homes actually get that closed data. Uh, so we tend to look at these factors uh, as an uh, indication of where demand is heading. And I talked about how sharply demand fell to end the year, but we're seeing these buyers re-enter the market, like you mentioned, with uh, some price stability in rates. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, Mitch, overall... Like you said, 2022, we were on a decline, especially from the summer months in. Um, our belief is that that is seasonality. Uh, we're a little bit more optimistic than most, and we think that, uh, yes, we haven't found the bottom of the market, but that that bottom is going to bounce right back up. And personally, Mitch, I think that prices are going to um, you know, just maybe stabilize more, maybe plateau. I don't think that we're going to get back up to where we were in 2021. I also don't think this is going to be anything like it was in 2008. Um, I think that things are just going to level out and it's going to take a few months, maybe a year for our sellers and our buyers in the market to adjust to that. Yeah, and you, you mentioned 2008 and Austin and I may be a little naive as <laughs> we're, we're young gentlemen in the uh, real estate game and we weren't in business back then. So. Um, I, I don't know what it was like working in that market, but I, I try to uh, put myself in the, the shoes of uh, someone who was and, um, and, and try and think in that mindset. Uh, but maybe I'm a little too positive, uh, <laughs> but uh, I think it's the only way to be because <laughs> you've you yeah. got to live somewhere and um, that, that cost is, is still going up as far as inflation goes. So. Yeah, absolutely. But Mitch, we're bettering ourselves, we're bettering our clients, we're trying to stay on top of these stats, trying to keep people informed on what's happening, um, and I think that you'd rather work with agents who aren't panicked and maybe just more realistic. I'm not telling everyone that now's the time to buy, you must buy, but I will say that over the last five years, every time a realtor says it's time to buy and those buyers have purchased, values keep going up, right? Um, and there is a chance that values could go up. There's a chance that values plateau. But again, back to the basics, supply and demand, which is the theme of this whole uh, market recap, is that there's still so many buyers that need homes, and there are still a lot of uh, homeowners that need to either upgrade, downsize, or move on. Yeah. And I think that with the whole supply and demand issue is that um, we, might, we might just settle back into a normal real estate market that we, we experienced coming out of that last uh, pandemic. Yeah. And you know, if, if there's anything we have been wrong about in the past five years is the rate of appreciation. Uh, just about every year, uh, prices have appreciated a little stronger than our projections. So um, right now, I, you know, I mentioned month supply at the, the top of our conversation. Uh, month supply of inventory is looking very similar to years past, um, which leads me to believe that we're in a healthy real estate market despite a, a drop off in the number of home sales. So yeah. uh, there, there may be less home sales and, and the, the volume okay. of home sales going on in this next year, uh, but we believe those are going to be pretty strong, serious buyers and sellers. That's what we're seeing right now. And, um, you know, just one more thing to tag on there is it, they've been, you know, experts have been wrong about the rate of appreciation, but uh, the estimates for depreciation over the next year and two, the worst one I've seen is 5% depreciation, mm -hmm. which is not a whole lot when you're talking about how much equity most people are putting into their homes and making payments. So realistically, um, you know, no one's estimating that you're really going to lose value in your home. Uh, other, uh, any, any noticeable value, any, um, any impactful value that's really going to change this market and recreate 2008.